Hello, this is Frazier Nyasuru, and let's talk about the Henry's Law. Um, so, here I have a Schlenk flask. I'm working alone today because I'm only allowed to interact with the TAs once a week. Um, I have put in there in the Schlenk flask 250 milliliters of water. The volume of the Schlenk flask, when I add up, fill it all with water, all the tubing, all the way to the data logger pressure port, is 610 milliliters. All right. So let's check the initial values. The initial values are pressure, 99.9 kilopascals, temperature, 17.7 degrees centigrade. All right, let me remove the pro temperature probe from here. Here's a dry ice. First, note that uh, you see some white kind of gas. Carbon dioxide is colorless, so I'll ask in the post lab why we see some whitish stuff. What is happening is the carbon dioxide, which is really cold, comes out and comes into the atmosphere that causes us to view uh, some gaseous stuff. Okay, so here is my problem today. Uh, the carbon dioxide that we have, the dry ice, is not greatly pure just because of the water absorption that's kind of seriously there. Even trying to wash it in dry ice kind of helps, but uh, it's still there. So what's a protocol? Here's a protocol coming back to here. I will drop non-mass of carbon dioxide into the flask, then I'll close the vent and raise this very quickly to the top here. The system is set, set such that it can't push up because of the rod going perpendicular up there. We'll seal it, let it come to equilibrium, and then at that point I'll turn on the data logger uh, record the base pressure, turn it on, and then record the equilibrium pressure on top. So that's how we're going to do it. But since I'm working alone, I might not be able to show all the operations. Here we go. I have here the mass of the carbon dioxide. Sorry for the state of the balance. I couldn't clean it. Don't know what is there. As you can see, it's going down by a reasonable amount uh, uh, every few seconds. So now I'll pause and drop it into the flask. I have dropped it into the flask and so you can see some white stuff above the 250 milliliters. I'll ask you to explain what that is. This cross valve is closed so the system is pressurizing and I do that because uh, uh, just in case there's any leak, I want to pressurize in here where it's secure and will only open the valve when I need to measure the pressure. I dropped it in because it was uh, kind of lowered and then raised the jack, lab jack, to fit it in tightly. The seal at the top here has vacuum grease, which kind of aids... Uh, uh, the process of keeping the pressure in. So for now, let's wait until it comes to equilibrium. All right, now I visually see that all the uh, dry ice, carbon dioxide solid has sublimed and the solution looks clear. I kind of stir the solution with the stir bar just a little bit and then I'll turn it off. At this point, I'll turn the data logger on. At this point, the data logger just recording the base pressure. So now I'll, I'll open the valve so I can get the equilibrium pressure. As you can see, there's a steep rise in pressure and it's kind of steady up there 
and the stage right at the top are now paused. Kind of hard to read, so I'll read it and give you the value. Two hundred and eighty point two kilopascals. Two hundred and eighty point two kilopascals. So our experiment has been highly compromised by the quality of our dry ice. Uh, when I did this experiment originally, I had big chunks, so I could break them and get away from the, any surface contamination break it and get the middle portion and then throw it in and the results were more reliable that way. So here our, um, our dry ice is highly compromised by serious water absorption. I was looking in the freezer where I got this dry ice and realized that it had been there I think for the last month or two and so it's highly compromised and so what you get are values not as good as I had in the pre-lab, but at least you get an indication of how to do the experiment. So, what are the things to think about? Well, the balance. When you weigh the stuff, what happens? Okay. First, of course, uh, the purity issue with water absorption. The balance with the weight decreasing, although I rapidly put it in there as quickly as I can, how does that affect the values of uh, PCO2, the pressure of CO2 that we measure? And so I'll ask you to consider these things as you process the results. Of course, if you've done the pre-lab, then you've done all the programming that's necessary in order to do the calculations. All you need to do is put in this relevant data. Happy day, my friends. Happy day. Bye-bye.